Hello Drafters, I'm here today to talk about one of the, if not the, uh, most exciting games of Magic I've ever played. I had really good fun playing it. Uh, only thing which would probably make it better is if I was playing in person. It was in a Strixhaven draft. I know some people out there are getting bored by it, but uh, I had a little bit of a break in the middle because I had a broken laptop and uh, yeah, I'm still really, really enjoying the format. I, I, I like a bit of the Silver Quill aggro, but uh, this definitely wasn't a Silver Quill aggro deck. Now, I'm not going to show you the whole draft because actually, to be honest, most of the uh, rounds were a bit boring and I ended up going 3-3 three, three in the end. But this one game, it was absolutely, for Chef's case, just absolutely fantastic. And you can see the deck, it's absolutely bonkers. Uh, I've got a Jadzi there and a Mind's Desire. I've got some other really sweet spell stuff going on. Uh, I've got the Quadrix Command and I've got a few other things. So it's a really, really sweet deck. Uh, I've not even put all the spice from the sideboard in there. I've got a Well of the Storm and a Tainted Pack there. I uh, couldn't really justify playing either of those, but the deck was really sweet. Um, great game. I'm going to commentate through it. I was just recording for something else. I was just recording on the off chance, and uh, I thought it was a really good good game, so I thought I'd just share it, and I'll commentate over it. So here we go. Okay, so playing against Johnny Risco, and I'd love to be able to see if Johnny Risco's out there somewhere. Uh, is, that play on, um, is that a play on... Johnny Rico from Star Trek Troopers, I'm not sure. Not a bad start here. I'm definitely, definitely Simic. I've got a, the campus there. I've got some things to play. Got the Adventurous Impulse as well. Uh, pretty sweet little over in hand and feels pretty good. I think at this point I was actually 0-2. Uh, like I say, I ended up going 3-3, but I was really, really wanting this win because I would a 0-3 with this deck would have been really, really bad. Um, so, yeah, they're playing uh, Simic as well. They're playing the Quandrix as well. So, you know, they've, they've, they've got, it's a bit of a mirror match, and I think it was a second mirror match I'd had. Something I really missed from pod drafts, actually, is not uh, not getting the mirror matches as much, because I think uh, mirror matches and draft aren't great. Quandrix Pledge Mage, really strong card. Uh, don't really have a way to deal with that at the moment. The Quandrix Command can bounce it later when it gets quite big. Quite happy to play the letter of acceptance at the moment. Devourer and Tendrils, I need to uh, have a creature down to be able to punch their creature. So, letter of acceptance gives us a bit of ramp. And I've got some pretty spicy things I can do if I get some creatures on the board. And I think that's the main thing I lack at the moment is, is creatures. So, Major Sequence is pretty good for those, them. Uh, they actually go for a mountain here. So, that's a little bit of spice there I'm a little bit wary about. And, you know, when you see that come down, it's quite easy to mix, miss as well because it's coloured blue and green because it's blue, green, fractal. One of the very few cases of a coloured land in, in Magic. Um, I could bounce the mountain back to the hand. Uh, but I don't really have anything else that's really worth doing here. So I go for the pop quiz and I can at least get a, something from my lesson plan in the side. Um, it's a bit of a toss-up what I go for. I think, you know, there's, there's a few different bits and pieces that can go on here. Unfortunately, Containment Breach doesn't do anything. And the best thing is probably just the Environmental Summoner, which I can cast next turn and have a mana left over if I have something I can do with that. Eureka at the moment for the opponent's pretty good. It ramps them, draws some cards. It's uh, making some stuff quite big here. And actually, all of a sudden, it starts feeling like I might be really on the back foot here. I can get the Elemental Summon out, but I can't cast the Devour and Tendrils yet. And probably quite soon, the Quantix Predator is going to be out of the realms of uh, the Devour and Tendrils. What I wasn't expecting to happen is this. Uh, <laughs> the opponent's playing Simic or Quandrix. And yes, okay, they've got Red Mana. That's quite... Un that's quite common because often you'll splash the odd red spell or the odd uh, the odd Prismari spell, but I wasn't expecting for, uh, Valamagus. So, yeah, that was uh, pretty frustrating. However, there is a solution to this. And the opponent's getting a little bit cocky, if I'm, to, if I'm being honest. So I did take a lot of pleasure in this. So I can bounce their Pledge Mage back, take the three counters off it, put the counters on mine, and then devour on Tendrils to take out the care of the Velamagus. And I was really happy with that. And to top it all off, I can also cast the Emergent Sequence, so I get a three turn spell, uh, three spell turn. And I'm down to eight. I've, I've gained two life from the Devouring Tendrils, but I'm quite happy to uh, go through all this and uh, get myself uh, an extra 2-2. Two, two. And I really feel like, although they've got a lot of cards in hand, I've um, really got back a little bit. But I'm at eight. They can attack for two here. I did feel like I needed to get in for that six while the defences were down. And it's something I can keep going through. They've got a way to put a lot of counters on their creature here. So that is a little bit concerning. And then they've also played Needlethorn Drake. Flyer. Um, I've got the Mentos Guidance in hand. Um, but yeah, so, you know, okay, I've stabilized a little bit. But then the opponent really comes back. They've got the cards in hand. They can do some really silly things. 
and you know they've, they've got quite a board on, on board now so um draw another draw spell it's not doing a huge amount we'll uh, have a look opponents got a little bit annoyed i did enjoy some of the emotes that were going on in this case and ooh, a jadzi now it, a jadzi by itself probably isn't going to be the greatest in the world um but because i need to be able to cast an into our sorcery afterwards but uh it is still a pretty good card to cast and Mentos Guidance, I uh, get a Neil Drake, and that is it, because I don't get the copy. Uh, but the Neil Drake does allow us to block something of theirs, and uh, you know it, it, it makes them not want to attack as much. I can block their Neil Drake if they attack in the air. Uh, so actually, it's quite a key card to draw there, so I've got really, really lucky, nice little top deck. Um, still not feeling great, if I'm totally honest. I mean, you can probably guess that there's another twist to come. Um, you know... I, it, it, it was a, it was a fantastic game. It was really back and forth. I felt like I was always on the back foot, um, and you know it, it was it was so back and forward. And even after the next twist, um, you know that the, there's other things that goes on. So uh, opponents played the Anatrol. They put the Expanded Anatomy on the Quandrix Pledge Mage. They probably don't want to attack with it because I got the Needle Thorn Drake, and I'll, I'll happily block it. I've also got a six six there, and I draw the Mind's Desire. Who already got Jazzy? Draw the Mind's Desire. This is exactly what I need to come back here. So uh, the opponent is not even closely aware what uh, they're going to get in for themselves here. Uh, you know, they could just kill me this turn. They could quite easily just kill me this turn, but I don't think that's going to happen. And if I draw a spell next, that, that's going to make the Mind's Desire absolutely amazing. If I get a creature, fine, okay, I'll, I'll play the creature. They get the Quandrous Cultivator, not a bad draw. Uh, they get a search for a, a land. It's a decent body creature. Three falls not the worst in this format. Uh, it doesn't get past the Jadzi, but there's ways they can make it bigger. And, you know, they can quite easily get rid of the Jadzi or the 6-6, six, six, but it's not really a place that they want to attack. And there we go. Zimone. So we don't get the um, the trigger off Jadzi this, this time, which is a bit of a shame. But I do have plenty of mana for the Mind's Desire and to uh, activate the Jadzi. So uh, this is gonna be a spicy turn and absolutely uh, this just made my day it's absolutely made my day i've got uh the island there i've got the letter of acceptance and yeah the opponent just uh can't help but appreciate what's going on so yeah just take everything that's uh one two two spells there zimone makes it three spells i suppose Draw the land, which is a exact, exact thing I want to do with the land. Go get something from my sideboard. Mainly get the environmental sciences for the life gain here, because I want to get the life. And then I also get the with a bloom pledge mage to uh, really stable help stabilize my life here. So I can cast the with a bloom pledge mage, and then cast the environmental sciences. And sadly, I won't be able to uh, get the jazzy trigger off the environmental sciences. Uh, so uh. Do, I can't remember if I cast this. Yeah, I do. I, do. I thought I'd cast it. Because I get, I get four life here, and I think the four life is really important, more so than uh, getting the Jazzy trigger. So get another Zimone out. Can't play the one, but that's fine, because I didn't really want to uh, cast Zimone anyway. I've already got one on the board. Go get a land. Thin the deck a little bit. Don't get a land, because I was really short on cards, and this is a worry now. I've stabilized. If I was to keep playing, I'd almost definitely win at this point. However, I am really low on cards in my deck at the moment. Um... It's a, it's a real concern. It's something I had to be wary of. So I start attacking through. I attack with that 6-6. Six, six. You know, I want to start pinging down their defences. Uh, happy to take out the Needlethorn Drake at this point as well. Um, really want the block with the Pledge Mage and something else. But uh, I think just trying to get through. They take it. I'm not too surprised at that. I'm, I, I would possibly do a similar thing in their place. But I've got two five five. I've got three five fives, And I've got a 1-1 one, one Death Touch Flyer. So uh, feeling pretty good. They get the Master Symmetrist. They've got one card in hand. I'm not sure what it is. Um, but, yeah, it's 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 still really tough for me. I'm trying to get a, a glimpse of how many lands I had at this point. Um, I can draw with Zimone, but I really don't want to be losing too many lands. And and this is the, the, the key point of the game. And, and the, So I'm at uh, 10 cards in my library. Uh, Zimone draws two cards. I can't activate that too many times because... I'll just deck myself, and I draw two lands here, uh, which is really worrying, to be honest. Um, you know, I, I kind of, with Jadzi out as well. If I'm really getting the full effect off Jadzi, then 
am going to want to start uh, drawing. I, I, I don't want to start filling my deck even more, Jadzi, even if I'm getting the spells out. Um, so it's, it's a really tough one. Opponent having to think how they're going to do the blocks and things here. Uh, yeah, it makes sense to me, generally. Uh, I probably should have, could have attacked with uh, another Witherbloom Pledge Mage here. But uh, it's thinking on both sides of the board here. Um, the opponent knows that I've stabilised, but the, if they're clever, they'll realise that I have uh, stuff going on uh, with the library being really low. Uh, down eight cards at the moment, and seven when I draw my next card. So, um, yeah, it's it's not the best position to be in. Opponent gets a scry, so they get a little bit of card selection as well. Um, so not only do I have more cards in the library, they're more likely to be getting gas. I don't really want to... I could, I could scry, and I can scry, actually, because I've got the, the, the land as well. Um, but the opponent um, is a lot more likely to want to draw uh, cast things and, and potentially just double spell and triple spell if they're getting the right draw spells and things. So uh, there's plenty to be worried about at this point. Even though I've, I've got some spicy, spicy cards out, um, I'm by no means in the lead here. In fact, I'm probably slightly in the back foot. So I get my scry. Uh... On top we have a, come on opponent, Serpentine Curve. That is, oh, perfect. Because not only do we get the Serpentine Curve, I also get to activate the Jadzi from it. And I get the life. So, yeah, I'm happy to make a 12-12. I'm happy to make a, I'm happy to make a 12-12. Opponent's not happy for us to make a 12-12, but, uh, phew. Yeah, okay, that, that would have been a game changer because, you know, 12-12, they'd probably block it to, to kill it or they could well just concede on the spot because, um, you know, the 12-12 would be quite difficult to deal with and they'd have to throw away most of the board just to kill it. Um, but, uh, yeah, so a little bit frustrating. Either Helix is pretty good. So I get a return of permanent to my hand as well, uh, as well as getting rid of one of their things, get rid of their 6-6. Six, six. Uh, it does come back, but it does come back as a 6-6 six, six, and I get my 5-5 five, five back as well. So... Uh, quite happy with that. I, I get to kind of attack through, uh, get a little bit of life from uh, casting the cards, and uh, yeah. Also, get a Condus Cleth Mage. So, yeah. Happy in general. Not a, ba not a bad little uh, engine going here, but I, I am still really low on cards. Um, starting to feel better here. I, I've, I've, I've got ways I can kind of do stuff. Um, I've got ways I can kind of attack through, but I think I'm down to about five cards in my library here. So I've really got to get rid of their 10 life, which is a significant amount of life, quite quickly. Resculpt. Uh, get rid of my 5-5, five, five, make it a 4-4. Four, four. It doesn't attack. It means that I don't need to chump block something this turn. It's, it's probably one of the best uses of Resculpt I've seen, to be honest. Um, I'm not in a position where I feel like, uh, comfortable just attacking through. They've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They've got 11 power on board. All they need is a pump spell and, and they'll be able to uh, smash through really, really easily. They've got a, a, a decent amount of stuff going on, on their side. Uh, Quandrix Pledge Mage comes down as well. Really don't feel like an attack through now. Yes, okay, they, they'll have to block. They've got two Quandrix Pledge Mages. Yes, okay, they'll have to block, but I really don't feel like I can attack here right oh, with everything. Um, I feel like there's enough things that uh, they can just block and get out of the way. I do have the Neil Thorn Drake. The reason I haven't been attacking is because the Master Symmetrist has reach. Um, but I'm quite happy to attack through here because then I can play the Neil Thorn Drake to, to block with on the crackback and uh, be quite happy with that. Also, once once the um, Master of Symmetry is out the way, I've got another 1-1 one, one attack within the air and that 1 damage every turn is, is, is quite significant, I think. So... Uh, I think the Neil Thondrick, it's such a good card in this format. It, for, for the Quandrix decks, it's for the Simic decks, it's exactly what it needs to just be able to um, ensure that they're going to be getting through all the time. So opponents making some blocks, make some blocks to totally understand what they're going for here. You know, they're just making sure they are uh, going to kill as much stuff as they can. I want to get rid of the Pledge Mage because all those are 2-2 now can definitely grow. Get rid of the Symmetrous because it's a 4-4. Also blocks my Flyers. And now I'm going to get them down at 8. I'm going to get another Flyer down. And yes, okay, uh, they're going to be taking out some of my stuff. But I feel in a pretty good situation going forward at this point here. Happy to chump with like a moon now. Happy even to chump with the Quandrix Pledge Mage. Definitely happy to chump with my Island. Um, and probably also Needle Thorn Drake if uh, they're going to do something really ridiculous. So, yeah. 
feel in a much better place now. Um, I mean, the opponent. I'm trying to think. Could the opponent have anything here which I would be really worried about? Probably not. I think I've got enough things to attack through with to get the the damage. We're going to put something at the top here. Let's see what it is. Can't actually remember. Pop quiz. Yep, yeah, they're just going to draw, and I think that is pretty much game over. Um, it was a hard one battle. It was really difficult. Um, but it was amazing. It, you know, they playing the Velomachus Law Hold, um, then coming back straight afterwards uh, after I dealt with it, and then just being able to get that Jadzi, do the Man Mind's Desire, do the really cool stuff, but then fighting my own deck the whole time. Um, Biomathematician, pretty good card to draw here. Um, happy to get that because, I, oh yeah, you want to draw it, Chris, come on. Uh, really happy to draw the Biomathematician because I, I've already got a. Uh, the, the island is a fractal, so I get to put a counter on that. Uh, it's another chump blocker. In fact, it's two chump blockers, and you know, just puts us in a really good position just to be able to feel comfortable attacking through with quite a lot here. Probably could get away with just swing with everything. Um, always worried about the. I, I could have probably just swung with the the pledge mage here as well. Um, yes, okay, they could have blocked it with a two three, but that means a two three can't block something else. Um, but really just taking out as much as I can on the other side of the board here. So getting for the two, they've got a fractal summon and they're getting a big old fractal, but I'm probably just gonna be able to swing through with everything else. Yeah, definitely was a bit cautious here. Um, I should have been, I just should have been swinging. I knew they had the fractal. I, they weren't gonna give it haste. I suppose they could have, they could have um, cast the mascot exhibition. Not mascot, no, that's the seven mana one. Uh, the one that, which gives things haste, but yeah, they, they know they're dead and Good game opponent. It was it was back and forwards. If you know who uh, Johnny Risco is, Johnny Rico, Johnny Risco, uh, hashtag find Johnny, because um, I, I would really like it. It was a, it was a great game. I really want to give him kudos because it was a spicy spicy deck. Splash the Vela Max Law Holding Quandrix. Really really good. If you've enjoyed this, get, feel free to give us a like and a subscribe and do all the YouTube stuff. We will be coming up with some uh, Dungeons and Dragons MTG set things coming up. Uh, Forgotten Realms, that's the word I was looking for. Forgotten Realms, almost forgot that. Very, very soon. And a few other bits and pieces in between then and now. But love to see you again. And hope to see you again soon.